I was right and you were wrong. I'm going to need some context. I'm not sure what you're talking about. You know exactly what I am talking about. I, mean, I know what he's talking about, but I wasn't wrong. Just you, you, Sam, you, you, you were the only one that was wrong. Can y'all got clue me in or something? Oh, you both said hey, hey. that you did that the stranger was Sauron hey. and you were wrong. And no, I will, no. con- I will. Con- if you recall I'll, I'll our con- last episode, we'll talk, I save it for said, the show, uh, but I'm going to continue to rub it in for the rest of this episode. Uh-huh, this uh-huh. is Tatooine Sons. It's true. It's true. All of it. What is the name of the Porg on the Millennium Falcon? Force is strong in my family. What do you think his name is? <laughs> it's a big moment. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Maybe Turbis? Do or do not. There is no try. Turbis? <laughs> Pablo, if you're listening to this live stream, <laughs> that porg's name is now Turbis. It's a good Star Wars name. We're not done yet. These guys recorded an awesome podcast called Tatooine Sons. Everybody was lit. Everything has gotten messed up this week because yes. Sam gets to go to a football game. Yeah. So. Good job, hey, Sam. y'all were the ones who pushed for me to you do it. You box seats so. at a football game. Yeah, going to South Alabama and be, watching them beat Troy. Oh, They're winning. That's our rival. Yeah, yeah. We're, we've got a really good... They may make it into the top 25 for the first time in the history of the that, team. We actually got votes I know it. this year, which was like crazy because we're me not and a you, big school. BB Nate, two of us. We're gonna go to the Batman IMAX premiere. Batman? Batman? I, I wish. wish. I wish. Black Adam. Well, there maybe you, that, you never know. Black Batman <laughs> could show up. That would be crazy. No, if that, that we, Grace no. Randolph would have already spoiled it. Anyway, yeah. uh, welcome uh, to Tatooine Sons, a pop culture podcast, the only fan podcast to name a canon Star Wars creature and to be endorsed by the writer director of The Last Jedi, Ryan Johnson. We believe that pop culture is the mythology of our generation, that there is a story, it is written on our souls, and that these myths speak to that story. And that is why we talk about Star Wars and Marvel and DC and the Rings of Power yeah. and, go. and all week. these other amazing epic franchises. <laughs> that you love so much. I am David. I am the dad. Hi, dad. Hi, dad. Hello, gentlemen. I am honored to be joined every week by my two amazing sons, BB Nate. What, yes. you go- what? what is happening this week, BB Nate? It's finally, finally more DC stuff is coming out again. We have so much this week. I don't think you guys understand. I also found out the the new DC Super Sons animated movie is coming out this week. It's in a, a couple it's days. It's a good DC I, week. I legit only know two things coming out for DC well, this week. There's mm-hmm. a lot. We can talk and, about and it. Comics. We'll talk about oh, it. Oh, yeah, nice. coming up. Uh, Samuel the Hutt, are you doing okay? It's over already. I know. It felt like it just. So, I felt like it just started, and it's over. I know. And now I got to wait like two years. I know. That's it. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Dad. Yeah, I did not see the ending to episode six of Andor oh, coming. Did. Yeah. So we'll uh, seriously. We'll talk about that. But thank you so much for listening to this show. We do appreciate it um, for you getting a chance to hear our insanity. Uh, for about an hour every single week. That's we certainly a pretty good description. It is, yeah. Uh, we certainly appreciate that. Thank you for listening to the show. Please follow the show on the podcast app that you're listening to it on right now. It might as well make sense, right? Or you can do like Alan at uh, the meeting today at uh, uh, Alan Bell. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, he Jersey? was talking yeah. about the only iPod that he listens to. Oh, nice, nice. He didn't. Close and enough. somebody was and Josh. Mm-hmm. Josh uh-huh. uh, yeah, was I like. Know. You just called it an iPod and you meant podcast. <laughs> so it was. And here's one thing we know Alan won't hear this to, 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 to retaliate because he doesn't listen to iPod, I mean, podcasts or whatever this is. <laughs> so, anyway, um, yeah. So, thank you uh, for listening to the show. Yeah, we appreciate it. So, um, I'm excited. We got a lot to talk about. We do. Yeah. We got an Avalanche game to get to tonight. We do. Well, not get to, but to watch. We got yes. a Broncos game to watch tonight. Yeah. So, <laughs> let's stop talking about what we're going to talk about and talk about what we're talking about. Yeesh. All right, BB Nate, go. Black Adam is almost here to. Change the hierarchy of the DC universe. I wasn't. That wasn't trying to be. You weren't because no. it sounded like you were trying to. I, I be almost. Rock. I almost went, but I. Didn't. I could almost smell it. Yeah. <laughs> and and most people, a lot of people, don't actually know who Black Adam is. <laughs> this is very. So true. let's cover all of that <laughs> real quick. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? 
Yeah, I can fly. I'm here to fight for truth and justice in the American way. The people in this room, which one is A, wearing a spangly outfit, and B, not a fuse? There's only one God, man. And I'm pretty sure he doesn't dress like that. That man has no limits. So, yeah, we have the DC Batman Superman Battle of the Super Sons anime movie coming out. The first 3D what? animated movie for DC. What's that about? Uh, the first Super Did Sons. you say free? 3D. 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 Yeah, it's like, it's oh. like a, it has resistance. How do you watch it? Same. HBO no, Max? like like 3D animated. Like it's not a 2D oh, 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 oh. Right. animation. It's right. on HBO Max or it's, it's going to be a uh, download or something? It's rent. Uh, okay. Right now it's purchased, but okay, it's so we rent. that. Like next, what's that about? Days. Um, Superman. Batman and Superman no, are Batman. Up taken battle. over by Starro, the dude from Suicide, yeah. the Suicide Squad. And so Damian Wayne and John Kent team up, which they do in the comics uh. a lot as kids, and they try to set free the their dad. Oh, that sounds interesting. interesting. Okay, so we've got that. What we else? have that. We have a bunch of comics coming out too. Some big uh, comics. Some big comics. One of which I know of, and I'm excited. Yes. Which one is that? We have the Riddler Year One by oh, Paul Dano. That's right. Yeah. yeah let's go. Gotham Knights Gilded City. So did he comics. like write his own backstory in order mm-hmm. to? Yeah, like, actually, he wrote, wrote his own backstory before the film was ever right. Filming. And then they turned it into a comic. And then Matt Reeves was like. I'm going to get in touch with DC That's Comics cool. people. That's so cool. I love that. This, I love and it it's for great. Sure. All right. What else? The Gotham Knights Gilded City comic, Ooh. which oh, that comic. Has, has two storylines. It has a Batman storyline, his last case, and the first vigilante of Gotham City, his case. Wow. Which are going to tie into Gotham Knights. You vigil- also get an item, an in-game item with each issue. Oh, cool. That's pretty cool. Um, also, Detective Comics starting a new arc this week. Um, nice. There was a Batman Beyond the White Knight. I think it's having its last issue, which is great. Jeez. Okay. Um, and then what else is happening this week? BB Black Nate? Adam. Black Adam. And happening. Gotham Knights. We're talking about Black Adam. Gotham Knights looks yes. good. Too. Yeah. Looks really I'm good. And what, what didn't they come up with like some like multiplayer thing last week? They, they talk- did a heroic assault. All right. So I'm excited. It's going to so, be great. All right. So why don't we talk about Black Adam? We should. All right. So we We're should go. Oh, yeah. His notes aren't up ah, on the screen. So so who's yeah. that, whose fault yeah. is that? So it's my fault. Black Adam the right is, a, is a very tragic villain or anti-hero. It changes. What a tragic like. villain or an anti-hero? Yeah, okay. it changes what feels like every single comic he's in. It's okay. different. But I'm going to kind of explain the origin of him in the comics, the new origin, All right. because there's multiple origins. This is the most recent canon one. So Black Adam and his nephew, Amen, or something like that. Um, Amen. A M A N. That's all. So, uh, Amon. Yeah. Amon. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, Black Adam was a slave, which we know right. is ca- canon to this movie. And the rest of Black Adam's family was killed. Now, the uh, Amen guy, his nephew, went and saved him. And they both almost died. Black Adam, Teth Adam is his real name, um, was on death's doorstep. And so was his nephew. And the wizards brought him to the uh, Rock of Eternity, which we, you know, see in Shazam. Okay. And this is when all the wizards were still alive. All of them, not oh. just Shazam. Uh-huh. And so they gave his powers. The, the wizards granted the powers to his nephew. Because he was good of heart, and I pet at him. Right. And but the nephew said, "Please give my my uncle powers because he's almost going to die." And they're like, "Well, your whole family will gain powers when you gain powers, so he'll be healed." And so he was healed, kind of like what happens with the Shazam yes. family, yes. right? And okay. everything was fine. And Black it's Adam making a lot of sense right now. Mm-hmm. And okay. Black Adam and his nephew, <clears throat> nephew was technically Shazam at that point. Black Adam wanted to kill all the dictators of his of Kondok. Because they were killing they were, him. They were slaves, <laughs> slave owners, and they were kind of just making life Bad terrible guys. in conduct. Yes. Right, right. And his nephew was like, no, we should talk to them, reason with them, get them to see peace and not have any more bloodshed. And Black Adam didn't really like that. So he killed his nephew. Oh, that yes. escalated quickly. <laughs> and d- killed... Everybody in Kondok and killed all the wizards except for Shazam and took the power of his nephew. And so Shazam wow. banished him to the, bad to the place of beyond the stars and renamed him Black Adam. That went from zero to 100 real quick. It does. In the immortal words of uh, Ron Burgundy, that escalated quickly. <laughs> that did. So, yeah, he's a bad guy. But eventually he comes back 
to Earth. And that's fine. Well, and he rules for Kondok okay. and all that stuff. So do y'all think that this this tragic, really dark backstory will get adapted into the movie? No. Because starting it off with that will make it very difficult to sympathize with this character at all. Plus, really we see in the trailers, I think we see him cradling his, I guess, nephew or son, something like that. I think that. it's his son. In this, I think it's his son, yeah. So I don't think that that's going to be the case. Um it would be cool to see the like Clock Council of Wizards and stuff. Yeah. Um, and that, that very well could happen. We, we still don't know how he gets his powers in this movie. No, you got to find that out. Right. So it's probably going to end up being similar I mean, to that. We've been having the same clips every trailer. <laughs> right. Which is good. They're playing it close to the vest. But I will be curious because he's clearly not very pure of heart in, from what we've seen. So it's going to be weird that they would just grant him powers without his nephew. So it'll be interesting to see how they navigate that. But it probably they probably won't show the uh, the genocide thing. I'm not sure we're going to see it exactly as you laid it out, but I do think that we're going to see something similar to that. I think it it's going to be dark. I think that they want you to feel very uncomfortable with this character, and then they want him to turn to do to do good things in this movie, but still be dangerous by the end. Because that is black like a loose cannon. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. and so that's, I think that's exactly mm-hmm. where they're going to, or that kind of thing is yes. exactly All what right, they're going to say. So a little bit more in the comics, Black Adam rules Condock once more. And it's a pretty straightforward origin, but I'm again not sure how they're going to make him an anti hero in the movie. Now, to kind of switch to the movie a little bit, it has been in production for an insane 15 years. Well, now. in some way, I don't think it's actually production, production, well, but The Rock has been ro- working right, on it right. for 15 okay. years. That's a long time. And it's finally being released. It, it has definitely had some bumps with changing directors, actors, and dealing with the ever so forgiving Motion Picture Association. <laughs> They had to send about five cuts of this movie just to barely get a PG-13 really? rating, and Darn. that was only approved four weeks ago. We need to release a, a whatever cut. A red what? band cut. Well, well it's actually director? being rumored the director might actually put one of them on the Blu-ray because he said like there's going to be a lot of special features that he might put on there. Because cool. I think that'd be a good idea because then mm-hmm. people could still see it with younger audiences, but if they want to eventually watch the darker okay. cut, mm-hmm. they can't. So what do y'all think about the whole brutality and intensity of this movie that's being teased see what's weird is like from the trailers and stuff i haven't really haven't gotten that intensive a vibe from it i mean it's felt like just your standard superhero movie stuff um so it'll be surprising to see where they go with that because it doesn't that's not the vibe i've been getting um but it makes sense for this character he's a dark character he's not gonna be like your batman superman daredevil type character where they want to show mercy and not go overboard when when it comes to violence and stuff but this guy he does yeah. not give a care that the people he's up against people are just insects really to him so that I, I it makes sense why that's in the movie i do not think that you're going to have it rated like a rated r put a push towards that based on violence Mm-hmm. I mean, excuse me, uh, sexuality no, or thing like that, no, 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 nudity, no. sexuality. That's not and I also don't think that you're going in that from a direction of profanity. And the reason why is because profanity is easy to cut out. So if they sent this four mm-hmm. times to the MPAA, right. that doesn't make sense for it to be about profanity. No. You can fix that. You know what the rules are. Mm-hmm. This is about violence. It mm-hmm. much is. This is about the black Adam character not being a good guy. And so you're going to see violence. And I think that it may actually be violence related to this story you just talked mm, about, it, because if black Adam genocide's pretty dark, kills his own <laughs> nephew, a young child in this, mm-hmm. that's the kind of stuff that gets an MPA, an MPA rating of R right. that's hard to push past. It's and violence, but it's violence like against children, the violence, violence yeah. against children, it skews rated R very quickly. And very genocide. Much. Genocide's generally not. When cool. the first reactions came out, uh, when on uh, last Wednesday, uh, a bunch of people were talking about how brutal this movie was, how it shocked them, how brutal it was, and they did not expect it. Some of them said it should have gotten an R rating. So basically, you're saying that when even though we got Mama ticket to go see it this weekend, she's probably she not, not going to see it. Probably not. Okay. But the director was talking about this, and he's like, "We wanted to stay true to the character of Black Adam and have him be brutal and have him be violent because that's who he is in the comics." And okay. so we wanted to make sure to get the PG-13 rating. But also stay true for the fans to keep Black Adam who he is. So will it kind of be like Invincible toned down a little bit? Probably. That yeah, that's kind of the 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 direction I think that we're gonna see in this. Mm-hmm. It's like what Omni Man did, but 
not as much. <laughs> no, that was, that no. was pretty dark. That was kind of dark. <laughs> that was so dark. Okay. All right. Now, the Justice Society being related to Black Adam isn't something new. It happened a lot in the comics, and it looks to be a huge part of this movie. So, what do y'all think of the Justice Society, and which character are you looking forward to the most? I'm going to go first, because I didn't know anything about the Justice Society, but I do remember Hawkman as a kid, oh, yeah. as part of the oh, Justice yeah. League show. Uh, show, and I loved Hawkman. And I, <laughs> heard, I heard a rumor today that there's actually talk of a Black Adam spinoff series on HBO Max, or HBO, what is it? It's Max, right? Yeah, Plus. Right. I don't know why I wanted to say it. Disney HBO Plus, Plus, HBO Max, Ruby I don't Plus, know. Yeah, yeah um, all those. It's on HBO Max featuring Hawkman um, uh, cool. as one of the major char- the main character um, of it. Yeah, I, I heard you. So too. I'm excited about Hawkman. So. That's cool. I mean... I, I gotta say, Doctor Fate. Yeah, I mean, he's such a, it's such an interesting, cool character. Um, you know, like magic characters in movies are always interesting because they can just do unbelievable things, right? Mm-hmm. So, I'm more curious to see what they're gonna do to differentiate him enough from Doctor Strange because they are very similar in a lot of ways. Well, and um, even Pierce Brosnan said that the reason that he wanted to play this character is because he's such a huge fan of Doctor Strange. <laughs> was yeah. it him or his kids? I thought it was but, his kids. But, him oh, and really? his kids. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. So. Uh, you know, I like that, but I want them to be able to set him aside enough from um, Doctor Strange. But I think he's such a cool character. Pierce Brosnan is an, a fantastic oh actor, gosh. so that's going to be awesome. Did you know too. he actually wore his real wedding ring in the movie? Really? To honor that's his cool. wife. That's cool. That's I cool. like so, that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, detour I for just a second. Did you hear today that it came out that Benedict Cumberbatch actually wrote individual scenes in and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Mazis because it wasn't dark enough? And, and he, he actually wanted, wanted it darker. to be darker than it was. I like I like your style, Benedict. That's Which cool. I feel like it was going to be. If so, we what are you tracks. most excited about in this movie, BB? Most excited? What? One of my most excited? Yeah, about? I mean, this is your deal. This is DC. Yeah. right? I don't know. I've heard of a good post credit scene, but uh, <laughs> yeah. we might have teased it last week yeah. and found out that it was right. So, yeah. For, um, thanks, <laughs> Grace. Right enough. Um, <laughs> spoilers. Yeah. Gosh. I'm late for that, but whatever. Ugh. But I'm. I'm super excited for Dr. Fate. I, I love his character. I'm so excited to see that if they they can differentiate him, if they focus on who he is from the comics and his backstory and, his and stuff. powers and where it comes from and the helm and where that comes from. And the, the fact that when Kent Nelson is in Kent Nelson form, not in the helmet, it's a completely different person. But Dr. Fate, the person inside of the helmet, Nobu, which is the name of the Lord in the helmet. Is, is is out there. Hmm. Ken Nelson's not a part of it. This is more like a puppet. So it he beca- yes. it's, becomes a very different personality, very different, different person. character. Yes, it's more brutal. Okay. Nobu's very brutal. Hmm. So, but Ken Nelson's normally the one that holds him back and keeps him from being kind of like a that Moon Knight sort very of much, idea. Very much. Just Moon Knight mixed with Doctor Strange. Hmm. That's that's a good yeah, way. Interesting. Put it. So interesting. I'm super excited for that. So last thing, you know, we always do this before a big movie or TV show. Prediction sure to go wrong. Prediction sure to go wrong. Man, I, I haven't thought about predictions. I mean, other than an end credit scene that isn't so outside the realm of possibility anymore. <laughs> Thanks. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Like, that was going to be my crazy, crazy prediction. Um, you know, maybe this isn't so crazy, but I'd like to see something with Shazam. You know, some sort of reference or even on screen Shazam that we know from, Gosh, from the DC. Great. That would be cool. I mean, because obviously they're very much related in the comics like they've got the same powers from the same dude um so i want to see that and i wanted to kind of set up a possible like black adam versus shazam fight because i think that'd be a really interesting story you would have the absolute brutality and darkness of black adam juxtaposed with a kid as a superhero i mean those are as poor chosen opposite. for purity of heart right those are about as polar opposite as you can get um so i think that would make a really cool story so hopefully we get something like that teased uh an explanation for the empty seat in shazam that's black adam seat i the think end? so oh because there's not enough kids to fill up the yeah mm, that's a good point i didn't think that maybe maybe get a big team up movie coming. that would be pretty That's cool great. though i like that <laughs> maybe we'll get a giant justice League movie and black adam will be a part of it that but would be pretty cool what about you what's your crazy prediction i don't know i mean you know this so well you've been like keeping an eye on it without getting spoiled on the story mm-hmm. right yeah no, I mean, you got much. spoiled on the end credit but you haven't been spoiled on no, the story nothing else okay. um, that's good 
gosh, there's so much that can happen because we don't know. This is cha- this is like Dwayne has said, and what I've heard from other people, people who have seen the movie, this is a new era for DC. This is the, the next chapter. Which is what we've already had the beginning part. Now this is the next part of it, and and so whatever it is, I really think I I'd, I'd love to see maybe a reference or something to Batman. That would be Bruce cool. Wayne, maybe from Amanda Waller or something like oh, that. That'd be cool. I know yeah. that the in the cast list and some some set photos. I was in a featurette from Black Adam. Okay. Somebody from Peacemaker was in it, ah. so they're tying that into. Not that I really care, but oh, I mean, it's still, it's still it's cool interconnecting that, that the universe connecting things as well. So I just I just hope it's a good movie. I'm sure it will be. <laughs> DC, it sounds like everybody seems to be pretty excited yes. about it. So Black Adam comes out in just a couple days, and I can barely wait. I'm super super excited. So please go get tickets and see this movie as soon as you can on the biggest screen. You can. The biggest screen you can. Amen. Oh, yes. We're seeing it at IMAX twice we in the first week. Twice. Let's go. That's right. Let's do it. Uh, very good job. Good, good segment. Good segment, Nate. It's a great way to navigate that when there's a bunch of spoilers out there and you don't want to get spoiled yourself. So mm-hmm. <laughs> that was good. Awesome. All right. So... Um, uh, we're headed into that weird space between A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back. Mm-hmm. Lots of canon and legends mm-hmm. content true. in there. What will today's Is It Canon be? This is not going to go the way you think. All right. Again, how the segment works. I give a description of something I found on Wikipedia after hitting the random article button. First time this time again. Nice. Um, you guys make an argument for whether or not you think it's canon or legends and why. Are we ready? Ready. Mm-hmm. All right. Stellar Energy Station. <laughs> Oof, okay. Stellar. It's stellar, man. Yeah. Following the descri- destruction, disruption. That That's too. a new word. Hey. We'll uh, coin it. Disruption. All right. Following the destruction of the first Death Star, the bounty hunter score used the energy station as his base of operations. He held Luke Skywalker and Leia Organa captive there to lure Han Solo into his trap. Fortunately for the heroes of Yavin, Solo and Chewbacca outwitted score and returned with Skywalker and Organa to the local spaceport. Oh gosh. Is uh, the so canon or legend to it. The only thing I could think of that this would be canon is from a certain point of view, Empire Strikes Back. Oh. A story from that. Not not comics or something? I was no. gonna go comic. I don't feel because like Because Nathan, think be- about it. Uh, from a certain point of view happens during the movie, not in between. And before? Not that much before. N- they have some stories everywhere. Okay. All, okay. All like right. he, it's his argument. Let That's him make fair. it. That's fair. It can be. It can be that. I feel like it could be canon, but I'm not 100 percent sure. I don't know enough of legend stuff in between New Hope and RPG. Empire. It's an RPG. It's an RPG. <laughs> yep, that's it. But I mean, is is heir to the Empire in between New Hope and? Empire? No, that's after the Empire. It takes after class six. after six. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. So I don't know of a ton of stuff. I'm gonna say pff, canon. I guess I don't know how. I'm just kind of you're just going for cannon, I'm shooting blind and hoping I hit something. All right, <laughs> I'm going cannon just because it. The plot sounds perfect for a comic, short, sweet, and to the point. You can wrap that up in one or two issues, real, real Three. easy. Three if you're really stretching it. Um, you know, it doesn't have a ton of impact on canon like story so you know wedging that in there is not gonna you know make any crazy waves so I, I, it sounds perfect for comics so i'm gonna go comic and therefore and canon canon a canon, canon comic. comic it is from the bounty hunter of ord mantel the bounty know. hunter of ord mantel is a comic strip written by ah. archie goodwin and illustrated by al williamson originally published in february 1981 by the los angeles times syndicate it was later reprinted in amazing heroes magazine one through five it was republished by dark horse comics and classic star wars one and up to page 15 of classic star wars 2 and then it was republished again on star wars.com's web strips section of hyperspace which is where our you know people like um pablo hidalgo and matt martin got their story oh cool and was made available to the public after penciler al williamson passed away on june 14th 2010 mm. therefore it is legend <laughs> so it was right. a comic yeah just not what I was thinking. But I thought that was interesting. That is interesting. That this is, is cool. a, a kind of cool thing. I mean, it's... I remember you, Star Wars comics. You don't realize how much content for Star Wars there really is out there oh, until you do stuff yeah. like this. It's crazy. Like, it's incredible. Yeah, very much. It's is. a lot of fun. I think yeah. I like having this segment. I do, too. Here. Otherwise, we just talk about Grace Randolph all the time. Yeah, it's just so, not fun. All right. Uh, Sam, go. That's me. Yeah, yeah. well, that, uh, that Rings of Power finale was incredible. It was okay. 
Hey. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, we have so much to discuss. Time. So <laughs> we're going to talk about all the reveals and big moments and what we can expect to see in season two. Be on your guard. There are older and fouler things than orcs in the deep places of the world. All right, then. Keep your secrets. There is no proof. You guys have said it on the show. I mean, how many episodes do you guys say that the stranger was Sauron? The stranger was Sauron. I said the stranger was Sauron because I I was genuinely concerned he was. But I want it to be known <laughs> that during the San Diego Comic Con panel, when Sammy was getting his teeth ripped out of his face, <laughs> I was following it and I was reading everything they were talking about with the stranger. And I messaged you guys. I'm like, this guy is. Gandalf, I'm calling it now. All right. All right. And so I called it months uh, before it started. Okay, okay. So we'll come back over here. Sam, you were wrong. Yes. And, and I was if right. If we're going off the bit I was playing the last episode, yeah. But if you remember, roll back the tapes. I actually said, but in all seriousness, <laughs> I do think Halbrand is actually sorry. Okay. So, all right. Yes and no. All but right. before we go any further, I want to get y'all's rating of the finale on a scale of one to ten big reveals. I'll let you go first, Sam. Nate. Your name. I'm Sam. Hi. You're Sam, aren't you? I Hi. am. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm leading this. The other one's Nate. Mm-hmm. Okay, Nate. I always go. has been. We're trying to stall for you. Come on. We can't do it much longer. Pick a number. I don't know. It was really good. <laughs> I you're, mean, you're tied between nine, a eight, ten. I, I'm tied between like nine and ten right I now. I figured because I mean, I, I I had no faults with it. I mean, I'm gonna give it a nine because we had no brown winner on deer. We don't know what they're doing. We had no Durin, and so and no Adar, and so and they they set up that whole plot with the Skildur's sister and that Plantier stuff. Yeah, and we'll talk never, about all okay. and never answered that. So there's a few things I would have liked more of few for, a few more answers than questions, so I could be held over. But again, the questions are going to keep me speculating until the next season comes out. So overall, I'm not disappointed, but I just would have liked to see Durin and maybe Durin the third. Dying, getting eaten by a Balrog or something. Yeah, I I would say that that was exactly where I was going to go. Was a nine, and for the same reasons that he talked about, there was just some loose ends that weren't tied up as well in this season. And it wasn't like they were cliffhanger loose ends; they were just loose ends Mm. um, with it. And so that can or strings leading to the next. It's almost like they expected to have two like longer episodes or something to be able to tell the rest of those stories and didn't. It's what it felt like. They've been planning for a five season story from the beginning and they're just leaning into season two just just sharing my number so mine's the number what's yours i'm gonna give it (laughs) i think i gotta go for a 10 and my reasoning behind it is we got so many like answers (laughs) answers but like lore and backstory behind some of the things in Lord of the Rings. We know somewhat where Sauron comes from now. Well, right? we know what in this story the Sauron is because well, we don't head, have that. In my head, it's going to be canon because I don't know much else. You know, we got an, right. an explanation for Gandalf. We got um, spoilers. reasoning. Sorry. Well, yeah, if we're talking about this, then if it's on the show. It's a yeah. spoiler. We don't care. So, um, you know, we got an explanation for the rings of power and stuff, where the first ones came from, why they were made. So I I loved it because it's already going to make watching the movies a different experience. You know, Stuart, I uh, was at a meeting with him today mm-hmm. and uh, during a break, he mentioned that he was, you know, because he watched because for those of you listening, uh, Stuart, uh, Pastor Stuart, our Stuart, you've had him. He was on the show a couple months. Uh, we did an episode with him about the Matrix. But anyway, mm-hmm. um, our pastor, um, he came over Friday night and watched the finale of the season with us yes um with it and he's super he loved it right mm-hmm. but he said that he you know he runs like m- like several miles a day right um, on a treadmill on a treadmill yeah and he watches movies and tv shows yeah. and stuff like that so he's re-watching the director's cuts and he's like it hits different 
the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, he's yeah, like, I it's darn. different. I guess we gotta watch it. I know. Oh, dang. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, all right. Um, and then a rating of the series overall on a scale of one to ten rings of power. I'm gonna give it an eight. <gasps> Whoa. Yes. No, oh, I mean, if this it, is IGN, though. It's got to be like, great, oh, no, it's so. an eight. I think that there were moments that were a little slower than they needed to be, especially oh. early on oh, yeah. um, with it. And they could have picked those things up. I do think that they left too many loose ends um, with it. And I think that they they hurt themselves with a couple th- of lines that feel at this point like throwaway lines. Um, but have created controversy for no reason. Uh, you know, that I I think that was a bad. And the most important one being when Galadriel talks about her husband, it, it comes across like oh, she she Kelleborn. believes her husband Kelleborn. is dead. Kelleborn. Yeah, and, and and we know in the movies and and later stories. And so people are like, that's a pro- that doesn't well, work. That's also a, think they're that breaking Isildur the story. Is dead at this point, and we know he can't be. I, so I agree. I mean, I went two years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> I went back and watched episode seven before mm. that day before we watched Where she it talks while about I was that. working on some stuff. She never, it, it's never confirmed that he's dead. dead. He Jeez. went to war and didn't come and back. And he never came back. And that's what, but I, you know, watching it, we can sit there and say, oh, it's clear he's going to come back. And we know he is in the, the Lord of the Rings trilogy right. and stuff like that. But at this point, that's a, that's been a controversy. Just a little things like that. Right. I get so, it. Nate. I'm, I'm going to give it a nine. Uh, 9.5 something like that i mean like the, the only problem i had were the loose ends i didn't have a problem with the pacing the slower the stuff normally i like it more okay. because That's i like fair. the character development and it had a lot of that i really liked the characters the writing was good i enjoyed it the production value and the set <laughs> incredible everything was oh absolutely absolutely stunning it was great but I didn't really have any problems minus the, the loose ends and during the third, not dying. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to give it a nine. Um, and the only thing I have, I don't have a problem with the pacing or anything like that. Um, and maybe this is just me being spoiled with the movies, but a couple more action scenes probably couldn't have hurt. That's I can fair. only really think of That's one fair. or two. Well, um, and, and, and I'm not saying that it's bad that it didn't have it. I think it need every minute it had on screen, I think was used well. I just would have liked a little more action because the action in Lord of the Rings is, is pretty cool. I mean, and I wanted think, more Harfoots. And more Harfoots. Had a lot of Harfoots. Um, <laughs> so that, that's my reasoning behind it. I gotta mind. say this. Tolkien didn't have a ton of action in his book. So the the way that they set all of this up was very accurate to how Tolkien I, wanted the stories to I, be. I'm not so, complaining. Okay. That's I just that's a personal choice. So um now, you know, kind of getting more into into mm-hmm. the episode and some predictions mm-hmm. that actually I was right, you were wrong. We went were right on. I was right, and you were um, wrong. but dad, at the beginning of that episode, you were really I, I, upset. I was very were angry. You? Gosh, I was playing with you all day. Yeah, I said I got I got I almost got spoiled because I saw this the stranger's name in a post and I Sam, have I, I explained to you that you're my favorite? No, finally you actually haven't. Um, Thank yeah. God. It after happened after what happened on Rings of Power finale day, yeah, BB Nate's no longer my favorite. Yeah, so. Nice, Let's it go. was great. I loved messing with you. He so much. totally messed with me. Yeah, so I many was, times. I was very angry. That opening sequence, which the, they didn't. I was so confused because they did the recap. And went straight into the episode. Didn't have a title. Yeah. Yeah. That and was I was weird. like, what's going on? And I'm like, oh my gosh, we're really trying to screw with us. <laughs> they did screw with us. Yeah. It was funny because Lucas Pinkard, Reverend of the Reprobate, mm-hmm. he texted me earlier that day and he's like, have you seen the finale of the Rings of Power yet? And I'm like, no, don't, don't tell me nothing. I, 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 I haven't seen any. We're watching it tonight. And he just sent me the three, emo- uh, three emojis of the, 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 zipped, the, mouth. the, the zipped mouth emoji uh-huh. um, with it. Um, later on, he texted me after it was over. I texted him and told him we were done. And I was like, they did us dirty with that. But anyway, um, <laughs> he replied back and he said that he and, him and his and his amazing bride uh, were sitting there watching uh, this. And he and he was like, David is going to be so angry during this opening. Yeah. <laughs> I, he was right. BB Nate, mm-hmm. what was my reaction from your side of the room? You, when- you were you were not happy. I, and I. I don't think I've ever seen him that get that upset at a TV show. No, and even before I was so you were, (laughs) 
<laughs> you were very anxious before this episode because you didn't want that to happen. Really anxious. And I was just laughing at your reaction because I'm like, this episode isn't over yet. Yeah, I know. It was like and five minutes. It's going to happen. Yeah. So. Stuart's there being the pastor. He's like, it's early. You know, they were going to spoil yeah, it that yeah, early. Exactly. You know that. Like, I'm right. like, I was just mad. You were, I was you were really just, just mad. Mad. I felt betrayed, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> the show you're going to join terrible. in with all the. I, was, I literally you're was going like, to start I'm, commenting on our own posts. Y'all are shills. You yeah. Know? Exactly. I, I'm like, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. I'm going toxic. You know, Geeks and Gamers is going to be like, oh. you know, they're going to be like mild compared to me right now. Do not mention power. those, yeah. that name. So anyway, <laughs> so, like, yeah, so you were upset, but, um, yeah. And then Nate, what were your, your thoughts when, uh, Halbrand kind of walked into the forge there, uh, man, I'll tell you what my thought was when he Relief? started talking. It was relief. Yeah, I was like, oh. It's like, oh, thank God. There's there. Sauron. He's doing things. That's a things. very like Sauron that. thing for him to do. And wait, he's got to be with Kellen Brimbor. That makes more sense than the stranger. Those jerks. That's exactly what <laughs> yeah. I thought. So. I thought, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is it. And I looked at Sam. I'm like, yep. We both we, shared we, that we like, look. Yes, You're like, yeah. It's finally happening. And gosh, that scene when he walked into that forge was perfect because that is so Sauron-esque and, mm-hmm. and, and playing into the ego of Kel Yeah, he's, he's like, like, so... He's like, the Lord, the great Kel Brimbor, he's amazing. I, I've looked up I to him that for so guy. long. And Kel Brimbor's like, yeah, sure. I'm amazing. <laughs> he's like, yeah, of course, I'm great. Yeah. And 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 then he like he plays with him. He's like, yeah, I am Kel Brimbor. He's so like, manipulative. No it was it was like Palpatine-esque. Yeah. Like yeah. prequel era Palpatine. Yeah. Very much. Those it are was, the best villains, the ones that, that manipulate everything. Because Sauron does that. And Kel Brimbor, the actor for him, said that before this in the San Diego Comic Con panel. He's like Celebrimbor is very easily manipulated. And yeah. You might be seeing that in this. And so yeah, I'm happy okay. they Makes went sense. that way. And it was great. That was cool. Um, now, I, I kind of... What, what did you guys think about the reasoning behind why the rings were made? Because as far as I know, I can't... I mean, maybe it is explained in the books. Um, but I'm... You know, most of my knowledge comes from the movies. So I don't know. But, you know, we didn't have a reasoning for why the rings were made before this, at least in, in live action. So what did y'all think about that? I mean, it made sense, and I was wondering how they were going to, you know, deal with the whole elves are going to die kind of thing. Right. The the rings being the way that they survived makes sense. I'm just not sure how the dwarves are going to get rings and the men are going to get rings. I think it's going to be kind of like, um, for lack of a better term, an arms race. You know, Sauron's going to go to probably in a different form to the dwarves and be like, hey... I heard that the elves over there are making themselves a super powerful rings, right? They're probably going to want They're probably, you got that meat thrill. They need more of it. Y'all, y'all should probably make yourselves some if you want to stand up. And then he's going to go to the men and be like, look what the elves and dwarves did. You know, they're, they're, they're probably going to gang up on you. Which you is kind of Tolkien-esque because Tolkien, like, you know, it, he inserts, you know, he was influenced by sort of World War One, World War Two well, type stuff. So I was reading a little bit of, of um, Fellowship of the Ring and he put a foreword in there and he's like, look, everybody th- wants to think that I, there like there was influence and allegory in this. I promise you there wasn't, but well, I don't it know probably necessarily if there's influence. I mean, not necessarily allegory, but this was, the, he lived through Right, World War so it's I. going to he lived through through those things it's going to impact your your worldview yeah. and i could see him making an arms race i thought eh, that's interesting maybe he goes to the dwarves and and they're having this balrog uh balrog issue and mm, they need yeah. to have some some way to conquer that and so and the uh, men and the men are already are under to, siege to survive yeah so, so y'all need some rings to yeah. get, get up you it's about power. Hand. We've got to remember right. that. The rings are about power. Right. So. And control. Yeah. Um, now, I have a question for something I, I don't quite understand in this episode. Um, but why didn't Galadriel tell Elrond and Celebrimbor that Halbrand uh, is sour? I don't know. Because I still think there is a part of her that is very dark. Uh yeah, and I mean, she admits that Because there was the a slight, I mean, that 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 little evil yeah. grin at the end when she was looking at the rings was a little, a little creepy. I mean, you don't, you don't look like that. My precious. Kind of like that. Sort of, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so there is a part and of her that wanted the power that Halbrand was offering. That makes, and I still think there is some of that. Makes sense, too, because you go to Fellowship of the Ring, right, and, and, Frodo offers her the one ring of power, the very thing that she needs to just take over. And she, you know, she even does, Scarred she says some child. of the lines that are almost identical. <laughs> right. right. It's pretty it's terrifying. Freaky. It's terrifying. <laughs> she says some lines that are almost identical to what 
uh, Halbrand says to her in that weird vision thing, right? But then when she declines it, she's like, I've passed, you know, I was like, I'm, I've, I've passed the test basically, which is probably something she's been dealing with ever since mm-hmm. that moment. Yeah. So I, I, I like think that that's explanation. a legitimate explanation. I think that makes sense. Yeah, very good. Um, You're a smart guy. Yeah, he is pretty smart. Is. Um, now that we, you know, know who Gandalf and Sauron are uh, in, in, in the series, we know who's who. How do you guys feel about our Gandalf and Sauron in the oh, series? I love Gandalf. Gosh, I love I'm both so, of them. I, me too. I, too. I do love both of them. They're great. But Gandalf, that was great. I mean, the whole follow your nose line at the oh, end. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Give it to me. And and the, the fact that he... He was cons- he was questioning who he was, and they're like, they showed me who I really was. And Nori's like, that's not who you are. I love Nori. You can make who you be. And and he's like, who all right. Be? And so who like, and so he, he <laughs> absolutely destroys the mystic. That was so cool. Go back great. to the shadows. Yes, almost b- very Balrog. Yeah. As you shall not pass, and using their own staff against them, turning them into those like mobs. Awesome. And stuff. It was so cool. Yeah. I love yeah. I love this Gandalf. Yes. Okay. And I love how they are enriching the story to answer the question that we never even thought to ask, which is why does Gandalf have such an affinity for the hobbits? Yeah. And so now you know why Gandalf has such an affinity for the hobbits. He's been living he's been he's had this affinity for millennia yes. right. with them. Right. All the way back to Nori mm-hmm. rescuing him mm-hmm. in this episode. Like telling him that's not you get to choose who you are. You don't have to be be. who you be. Yeah. Um, With that. So I love that. And I love that Halbrand is Sauron because he was a great Sauron. Mm. It is. It is. I know I said it earlier, but it is very Palpatine in the prequels. Even like when he's talking to um, to Gladriel, she's like, you told me that um you were king or something, right? Or like no, that. No, 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 you, you, you said that I was the king. You, yeah. You, you he's know, like, look, I told you I picked this up off of a dead man. You know, he like, he's like almost, I don't know if he ever really lied. I know. It's so and very good. Sith. I love oh, it. Oh, it's man. So good. Yeah. Yeah. They nailed it with that. And you guys did call that all the way back in like episode two or three. I guess it was three when he took on those people at the at Nur- Numenor, mm-hmm. and he like he was oh, he went, super violent. Oh, like, and you're you up. guys sitting there, you were like, "Is he Sauron?" <laughs> I mean, that's right. That's where it that was went, very you know. like sudden, yeah. So. Um, but as y'all were y- y'all were mentioning, um, we didn't get anything for Arondir and Boren's uh, Bronwyn's storyline, nothing for Durin's storyline, um, or Iarian's story in Numenor, Isildur's sister. Or Adar's takeover of Mordor. So, um, what were y'all's thoughts on that? They left a lot out in this episode. I mean, it's a little strange. I don't get why they didn't kind of answer some of these questions. But then again, I mean, I've got to think of... The shows do this a lot. Like, I didn't even think Daredevil Season 1 did it. At the end, yeah. they had a whole montage of all the stuff that's going to be set up in Season 2 that he's going to have to deal with. They had a little, little... And they can't do a montage in this because it wouldn't work. <laughs> it brings a yeah. power montage. wouldn't fit. <laughs> and so, I get it. They were setting things up for the next season, even if it was in episodes past, not in this episode. I'm fine with that. But... I don't know. Show a little bit of them in this episode, which they did with Asildur's sister, which is fine. That was fine. But Arondir and Bronwyn, what are happening with them? How are they dealing with this whole Mordor Southlands thing? And Durin, how is he dealing with the Balrog? What happened with... And Asildur. Where's Asildur? And yeah. his, his horse. Like, <laughs> what's the horse doing? And so <laughs> there's a lot I don't know. And... What is going to happen with Numenor and Elendil and yeah. Muriel yeah. and her not having yeah. an sight? I, I think that, um, you know, it feels like there's a, those open ended things were, were intentional with it. The, but the, the big thing that they needed to resolve in this was, was, was that who and where the rings the come stranger from. was Gandalf. Yeah. At that point, I didn't care about anything else. I didn't even care if we got Sauron same revealed. I just needed I to know that the stranger was 
Not Sauron. It was, it was Gandalf. They answered the questions that most desperately needed to be answered in that show. It's like, who's who? Specifically, really, where's well, Sauron? Now, and then now you can breathe. And where the rings come from. Because right. if there weren't any yeah, rings of a, power in the rings of power. It's funny how we're not really talking about that as much as we should. But what? The, the, rings of, the rings being well, forged. Well, I mean, yes, it's cool. But like, the, that's it. That's kind of the start of the story. But... I mean, if they didn't show rings of power being made in the rings of power, I can only imagine what the trolls would do about that. Well, so they aren't going to be happy anyway. So. Well, true, Definitely. but it would just be more fuel for the fire. Uh, literally. Um, but overall, what do you guys think that we, uh, we see ne- in next season? You know, we still have that Sauron storyline where he's kind of looks like he's going to Mordor and Gandalf mm-hmm. and Nori are off going to mm. Rune or something like Rune. that. Rune. And then, um, and uh, you know, all the other stories, storylines that we, uh, we saw mm. we previously mentioned. So, like, mm. do we see the other rings being forged? What's the the reasoning going to be for those? Maybe, well, we kind of discussed that. Yeah, but like, I, do you think we see that? I think we're going to be seeing a lot of just where do we go from here? You know, who's who? I'm more of that. I'm not. I'm not surprised that there's a lot more we don't know, and they're finally getting into the p- place where they can start talking about things that were in the Silmarillion and the Second Age mm-hmm. and things because they had to set that stuff up to get from the canon stories, and so I do hope we see a lot of Gandalf and Nori. I think we will. I hope we see them encounter maybe some of our other characters. You and think we see some of the other wizards. Oh, that'd be cool. We see, like, maybe I wanna, we see the friendship between Radagast and Gandalf. That would be cool. Arise because I could see that working very well in this series, mm-hmm. and that would be awesome. I love that. Well, and so I do cool. think that that we need to see Saruman as a good guy, right? Because that's what he starts off. And, you know, he's that he's way somewhat in the Hobbit. Hobbit. He's somewhat. He's the leader of his kind, right? And so we need to see that. And I think that that's where Room is. I think that's what we start seeing with Room, mm-hmm. um, with all of that. And then uh, I do think that. Sauron, I think the next thing Sauron's doing is going to kill Adar to, uh, to Moria. Uh, he's going to, <laughs> to Durin. Mm. Uh, he's going oh, to help them he, with uh, the Balrog. He's in Mordor, though. He's in Mordor right now. Yeah, he's got to go through Mordor. He's got to deal, deal with Adar. Um, but I think that the next big plot line location mm. is going to be the dwarves. I hope we see the blue dwarf or the blue uh, wizards because we only hear about them in the movies. stuff. I think that would be kind of cool, cool to see. So, them the only, so there's five wizards, right? So there's the two blue, Radagast, Saruman, and... Right, uh, and we Gandalf. don't know anything about the blue wizards. Not much. Okay, no, I think that would be fun. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be and then um, I kind of hope we see um, Sauron like not kill Adar. I hope he turns Adar into the mouth, the mouth of, of Sauron. Sauron. I think it would work. Because that's like, you know, I've... I've I'm Listen, not sure I track with the, what the mouth of Sauron. He's is. the dude the in Witch Return King. of the King, not the Witch King. No, that's one of the nine men. Uh, right. He's the dude who uh, talks to um, Aragorn in, in Return of the King. Oh, outside yeah, of the yeah, with yeah. The okay. creepy mouth yeah, and yeah. stuff. Okay, um, I think it'd be cool because like that's almost like a living torture. I, I like I. Oh, that is cool. I read where or like some of the commentary behind why he looks the way he looks and stuff. Why his mouth is like just grotesquely large mm. and like to, you know. Um, just formed and stuff yeah. is because it's like the words of Sauron are so like evil and impure. It's literally degrading his mouth wow. as he says them. So okay. I think that'd be kind of That's like cool. a cool punishment for, Adam. That is cool. um, and then Nate, you mentioned something that uh, one of the show run- showrunners mentioned could be kind of a plot for season two. Um, could you explain that? Yeah. I mean, when it comes to Sauron, they're very excited for this because they now, they said, now that we everybody knows how we're gonna Sauron, we can do so much. We don't have to kind of play with this. We can make Dance him around. evil. And they're wanting to explore the different eras of Sauron. I mean, in the books, we do have a repentant Sauron, and that's what we're seeing in this right now. That's true. A Sauron that, that feels some remorse, but then turns evil. And they're like, we're not gonna kind of go away from that. He's gonna be evil, but we have to go through this part of who he is at this point. And they're, Charlie Vickers is very excited. The actor who plays Halbrand and Sauron, he's very excited now that he is fully evil. He never actually wore the Sauron suit. Um, in the mm, show, not really? even at the beginning so or in the reflection. He's that like, I really cool. hope I get fitted for one soon. He's like, I want to, I want to wear it's like yeah. the Darth Vader suit. Um, right? I mean, it kind of yeah, is. And so he's super excited for it. And they, and the showrunner said, now that we have this and we're getting into an era, era of the second age that we can pull from, we're going to be seeing more canon stories, especially for Sauron 
in this next Because they have season. more to pull from. Because we are now allowed to do this. Because That's cool. they were allowed very little from the Tolkien estate. And so now that they can pull from it, they're going to be using that a lot. And That's they cool. had a lot of stuff they had to just That's make cool. up in this first mm-hmm. season. Very exciting. That's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I genuinely feel bad for people who gave up on this series early. Uh, that finale was one of the best TV experiences I had. <laughs> we were cheering and hollering. We were all cheering. Time. It was so much fun. Yeah. Um, but this series was full of intrigue and excitement, and it absolutely trade uh, stayed true to Tolkien right down to the very last song during the oh, end yeah, credits that, that we awesome. actually ended up staying through the credits for just because of the song. Um, I was already a big Lord of the Rings fan before this series, but you think? after that, I think I'm even more into this amazing universe <laughs> and its story. Um, and it's going to be a very long wait. You until need to have a day off of work just so you can binge the whole series. I, I, yeah. might, I might, you know, call in sick. Sorry. <laughs> I got, I got the showrunners and heads of Amazon are trying their best to get this out in 2023 with well, keeping the quality yeah i, was like, said, I don't care the how long they take as they long said, as that's, it stays that's, good that, if it came out in 2023 i would be blown away but i hope so it's because the effects, they already honest. have kind of some of the stuff ready yeah they've created so. i saw the first images from some of the first sets for season two already very it good. looks like it's the ruined village in um, awesome. noise uh, southlands very cool well that was that was good good job sam thank you and i was sure. right and you were wrong all right i um, was technically sort of right you were not right um i was right anyway um <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, uh, we've already talked about the big movie that come is, uh, comes out this weekend. I guess it's Black Adam is a good big uh-huh. movie. But there's actually another movie releasing that has some big stars in it that I'm almost certainly going to have to see in the theaters. Yes. <laughs> Whether That's you like to or not. Not for the reasons that you think. That's next on Movie Moments. At last, we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last, we will have revenge. All right. For Well, of course, we have Black Adam. But the other release this weekend is Ticket to Paradise. Two tickets to paradise. Uh, yeah. You see how I paused there waiting? You knew it was coming. Yeah, I, knew it was yeah. I was already seeing yes. it before it even started. Um, so. It's about the, the Academy Award winners, George Clooney and Julia Roberts, reunite on the big screen as exes who find themselves oh, on a sucks. shared mission to stop their love-struck daughter from making the same mistake they once made from working titles, smokehouse pictures and red Om films. Wow. That's a lot of production studios. Ticket to paradise is a romantic comedy about the sweet surprise of second chances. Oh, I won't sing another song. Director is uh, old Parker cast. Barry Manilow going through my head right there. So. <laughs> cast is George Clooney and Julia <laughs> Roberts. I already mentioned them. Studio is universal. It is rated PG 13 for some strong language and brief suggestive material. Um, Sammy I, and I I'm, aren't going. You oh, you guys have nope. to come too. No, I had I Gotham have Nights to play at studying. ACT. So, well, sorry. we're going that afternoon to Black Adam. Exactly. So you're not gonna have time to. Visit. I have to see it with mom sometime this weekend. I'm thinking. Yes. Okay, that'll be fun. It'll be fun. <laughs> Y'all will like it. That's not fun, and it'll Eisen. make her happy. Yeah. Maybe it'll end up being tied to the Ocean's Universe. Hopefully, it'll be better than that Sandra Bullock, uh, Channing Tatum movie we saw. Lost City. That was terrible. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. That bullet train was better. Bullet Chain train was better. Yeah. Chain, 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 yeah. That's um, true. <laughs> uh, for, for trailers, A Christmas Story, Christmas, the surprise sequel to Christmas Story. It's coming out on HBO Max. In I, like a month. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. It, it flew under the radar. I'm not sure how to It was really just an all nostalgia based trailer. I don't know yeah. I'm solid, not sure how to really feel about it. I know. I I'm kind of like, I like, kind of, part of me is like. You don't make stop defiling like <laughs> it's not, not right. defiling like a grave or anything, but you know it's like it's sacred. Stop touching. There it. are some movies you don't make sequels to, right? So. But also, part of me is kind of like morbidly curious. Yeah, and still almost want to watch it. I'll see what what people say. I hope it's I hope it's good. Me too. For box office results, there is no surprise this weekend. Halloween ends made first place with forty one million million domestic. Wow. That's big for a That's horror movie. Huge. It's huge. It's a big deal. It is. Um, it's the sixth I found out by the way. Ah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Smile, twelve million domestic, uh, still pretty good for, for a an second. even like yeah. a not a franchise horror yes, movie. That's tr- very true. Uh, and Lyle, Lyle Crocodile, seven million domestic. That's it. Yeah, I mean, kind of n- nothing very surprising with that one. Dead. Uh, I, th- I think it's time we move on. I think so. Yeah. Uh, once episode six of Andor started, it never really slowed down. It was pretty good. Um, but but the ending wasn't like any I expected. When it comes to Cassian. Pokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. Rebellions are built on hope. Force is with me, and I am with the Force.
If you live long enough, you see the same eyes in different people. John's old Polaroid camera had such a major role in this episode <laughs> with Nemec. I saw it that. Was that like was cool. Exact, like, it exactly like That's that. That's so Star AK-47s Wars. and Polaroid cameras. Okay, well, I'm still not a huge fan of AK-47s. They didn't, they didn't mess with those enough to make them not obvious, but I did like what they did with the Polaroid. That's so Star Wars. You take something old and you just, like throw a bunch of greeblies and random stuff all over it and there you go it's star wars yep that was it was it was very cool all right um let's talk about some of these major points one thing uh let's talk a little bit about nemec um mouse poor dude mouse poor guy yeah we'll talk about that in a minute but not right in this second anyway one thing has become crystal clear uh in the previous two episodes of andor that uh nemec is a true believer. Was. Was, yeah. Um, early in episode six, he has another fascinating conversation with Cassian where he rationalizes Cassian's mercenary status while also making it clear that he believes Cassian will one day join the cause. Um, and then he has a real deep down reason behind it. So Sam, at this point in the story, is Cassian in it for anything more than the money? I think... The seed has been planted of that idea, but I don't think that's his reasoning yet. He's still in it for the money, I think, but he's going to start, you know, ruminating about maybe there's more to this, right? He's probably going to, um, you know, get back into contact with, shoot, I already forgot the guy's name. Uh, Luthan. Luthan Rails. Um, he's probably going to get back in contact with him and he's going to give him another job maybe or Mon Mothma needs Luthan to do something and Luthan reaches out to, to Cassie and something like that because I think Cassian's realizing hmm, the Empire's really, really not good. They've done some really bad things and I might be able to make a difference. But I think at this point, he's just kind of in over his head and just kind of wants to take a break. He kind of... He's very similar to, I think, um, kind of Jin's mm-hmm. position. You know, mm-hmm. he's like, like he can, like you can see him re- being able to relate to Jin later, because right? Because like he, he needs a way out. He needs security, right? He doesn't have that. All he's got is a little bit of money, and that's it in mm-hmm. this galaxy. So being a part of a larger organization will provide him that security he needs, and I think he's starting to agree mm-hmm. with their mission. Mm-hmm. I really think that Cassian isn't in for the money right now, but I think that he's seeing that there's something more to it and will eventually become a true believer because we see it happen. I am wondering if we, because the director said this episode seven is going to be very important and go away from the arc format for a little bit and change it. Did I steal something from you? That's notes? okay. It's all right. It's, it's all right. We're just, you're just fired. I was just going to speculate. It's just can, can another reason why Sam is my favorite. Now. Can I, can See? I, go, can I continue? You continue. Me. Okay. Yeah. Well, I do think that the next episode is Cassian searching for his sister. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. I forgot about that. <laughs> and I am almost hundred percent sure his sister is already joined in with the rebellion Ooh. and his sister is going to, she's going to die at some point die. And that's, what's going to make Andor join the rebellion. Become right. a true believer. Thanks for the buzzkill there. BB. Well, I'm nice. Just, I'm, I was, pretty good with predictions yeah this you week, got that. so <laughs> let's see if you're right on this one all right so uh, let's keep going and talk a little bit about the empire here in other stories um we've seen how mm-hmm. the empire manipulates planets and people to bow to their wishes they have things like empire day celebrations to create this faux patriotism um around right. it and then they also conscript populations of soldiers um in order to be a part of the empire um mm-hmm. so that they were you know, serve it and, and that type of thing. On Tahani, it was really interesting. The Empire has turned the people's religious ceremony against them by forcing the prices for accommodations on these pilgrimages to you okay there? Sorry, I dropped some. Yeah, that's okay. All right. Uh, uh, for these, uh, for the accommodations to like kind of come to rise to uh, right. like, uh, completely exorbitant levels where they can't afford it and then offering imperial alternatives for free Mm -hmm. um, with that. And so then the pride of the, of the Dahani people won't let them accept the Imperial freebies um, and they aren't, they can't afford the other. So they skip the celebration altogether. And that's intentional. We find out um, throughout Mm -hmm. this. So uh, BB Nate, what do you think about this tactic? It's very Imperial. I mean, we've been seeing it and it's just, it's just cruel. It's evil. And we saw that from the, the leader on that base on Dahani. Oh, it was cruel. Uh, Zachariah from, uh, yeah, (laughs) Zachariah. Uh, oh my gosh, sorry? it is. You didn't, you you didn't realize you that? You didn't remember that? I was like, where do I recognize yeah, Zachariah? Really? You didn't get in, that. In the Nativity story. 
Oh my gosh! Yes, I I, pe- I picked up very one eighty the there with his character. Yeah, wow. he was, uh-huh. he was, that makes more sense now. There you go. I'm never going to see that character the same way again. He's well, you won't see him again. Well, um, I end up watching the episode. I will. So. Um, but he was cruel to his wife and his son, who was sick, and he still made him go to the ceremony. I mean, that's just not a good father, You're not a, a good jerk. husband. We have not jerk. seen a lot we're, of nice families. Yeah, in this where movie. are all the freaking happy families in Star Wars? There are no happy families in Star Wars. Why? Is it all found family? I mean, families let's just, it is. Happy? It's honestly a lot of found I, family in this I mean, story. Rebels, they're a found family. They're super happy. But I was going to say Hera and Kanan and Jason, but Kanan's, Kanan's dead. dead. <laughs> so come on, Star Wars. I'm, I'm not happy. Just one happy just one I'll happy. give you one happy family. Who? Bale, Brea, and Leia. Until they blew up. Until they blew up. <laughs> Can I was we have say a happy Aunt and Uncle Owen? They were pretty cool until you know they got cra- fried to a crisp. So what's what's the deal? But I think that the the tactic of using the religious parts of the Dahani people against them and giving them these comfort stations with free drinks and stuff to make them not go it's it's manipulative. It's cruel. And it's what the Empire is. And it's why these people, why Nemec was so against them, and why we all it's it's this been this debate since episode four came out of is are the rebels really the bad guys they're the terrorists they they went against the empire and now this is showing there's no doubt there shouldn't be a doubt in anyone's mind that the empire are the evil ones here they are terrible i do think that's an interesting point that you make there bb nate because one of the things that's happened in the disney era and it's not a bad move in the disney era is allowing us to see that the empire thinks that they're the good guys and why Right, I mean, and you see yeah. that in a lot. But then this series seems to be showing, yes, they may think that they're the good guys, but they are the bad guys. Mm-hmm. And I love that about this. What Very is your much. thought about this tactic, Sam? Yeah, I mean, it's so typical of the Empire. The Empire is very just cold and unfeeling about everything, right? If it doesn't further their goal in some way, they don't care about it. It's just an obstacle to be removed, right? So the only reason why they haven't just like wiped these people out at this point is probably because it's too expensive. Um, you know, so it is very just cold. They're like, let's just go with it for as long as we can. It was kind of that, that mindset of the officer. It's like, I hate this, but let's just do it and get it over with mm-hmm. because it's in the way of furthering our conquest of the galaxy. Right. So it, it fits. And I do like how it shows that darker side. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's funny to see how, they think that everyone is like them. Everyone is as evil as them. Because when the rebels, Vel, yeah, Vel, and all of them take the take the main guy hostage, the main bad guy hostage, he's like, "Well, if we do what you say, you're just going to kill us all, anyways." And they're like, right. "No, we're different." Right. You do what that we say, we'll let you moment. go. That's an important distinction that plays right into what you're talking exactly, about. Exactly, because the empire always assumes everyone's evil, but no. The rebels are are going to let you go if you do what we say, but we're going to be and they're so shocked when somebody is cold and cruel to them mm. because they never expect it. Mm-hmm. It's what Andor says in they the trailer. They didn't want the to kill episode. anyone. No. Like, right. They exactly. just did what they had to. Well, when the action starts, it never really stops um, as our terrorists fight their way out of the compound. And, but during the battle, uh, it's kind of cool. Nemec saves Cassian's life with a well-placed blaster bolt. That was good. Um, but then as the rebels try to fly to their escape, the very credits that they thought were their salvation shift in the in the craft or the train or whatever is this thing. What is this thing? I don't know. It's, it's like a, a shuttle. space okay. bus yeah, thing. Yeah, anyway, a space bus. Um, anyway, it shifts uh, mid the flight and it crushes Nemec. Um, and Nemec kind of is able to hold on long enough uh, to help the crew navigate the eye while evading some TIE fighters. And then, you know, we'll talk about this in a little bit, but later Nemec sub- uh, succumbs to his injury. Sam, what do you think um, Nemec's death is going to do to Cassian? Because it's Cassian's fault. Well, I think, you know, this is going to be more fuel to the fire of him wanting to join the rebellion right because you know as we see later in the episode he gets that manifesto he's gonna start reading it out of curiosity and honor for nemec and he's gonna see that you know maybe he's right maybe there is more to this than just making a little money um and you know knowing that nemec saved his life uh and you know he's gonna feel like a debt to him so it's definitely gonna have a major impact on on him i think i agree i think it's gonna be huge because nemec was kind to cassian and he was 
the most passionate to the cause through uh, out of any of them and he wanted casting to have that manifesto because i believe that nemec believed that casting could be the most important thing for the rebellion out of all of those people and so yes like sam said casting will start reading that manifesto i do believe casting will be reluctant while reading it he'll be reading it and be like this is stupid mm. and he'll throw it away and they'll be like but no this guy really believed in something let me see what he believed in it, and so want to want to hear uh, i don't know if you guys I'm, I'm almost certain you guys didn't pick up on this but there was a tiny easter egg in this Mm-mm. um it's really powerful though <laughs> did you know what nemec's last words were before you know he passed out mm-hmm. after while they were navigating getting no, out through the eye cassie and climb he kept saying climb oh climb. my gosh that's yeah. the last thing that k2so says oh. in rogue one oh. <laughs> why did it do that to me man i didn't need to be reminded of that no uh. do you oh no gosh, gosh no. he kept saying climb that's like such an uh, Easter egg on oh, that. man, terrifying to uh, think about that. Somebody who's somebody's brutal uh, in yes. the writer's room. Ooh, I have a really good idea. Let's just p- stick a knife in the heart of everyone that loves that movie. Okay. Um, <laughs> just before ne- uh, Nemec's death, Skeen Cypher. Uh, Cypher, yeah, uh, from Ma- The Matrix, reveals his true character by offering to split the credits 50-50 with Cassian if they just kind of take off and leave Vel and Nemec behind. In the end... Cassian just does the right thing. He just takes out Skeen. Yeah. <laughs> he just takes him out. Nate, did Cassian uh, kill Skeen out of anger or self-preservation? I have 100% anger because I feel like he felt like everybody on this team sacrificed so much and you're just willing to leave these people behind because you were you lied to them. You weren't in it for the cause or anything. You were just here for the money. And I honestly feel like Cassian saw some of himself in Skeen I do too. because mm. of that same situation. He was like Wait, because it, of all those people that died on his planet mm-hmm. to help him get free when what he was trying to do was get some credits and leave. Yes. And yep. so he was he was angry and he was scared mm. because he's like, am I turning into this guy right here? And so that'll also help with Nemec's manifests and all that stuff. I think that it was just 100 percent anger. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I do think it it's just furious that he would even consider something like that uh it definitely caught me off guard because it was was lightning fast it kind of harkens back to the beginning of rogue one but it's the it's the other side of the same coin that case it was not anger it was self-preservation he was just he just had to do what he had to do but in this case you know that he was just so appalled that he would even consider doing something like that and i'm certain what happened to neck or uh, Nemec was was weighing on him at that point um just because look yeah Nemec got crushed for you and now you're just willing to yeah it's no big deal with me right and I really like the point you made Nate about like how he sees himself in there in 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 skiing a bit in that interaction I didn't make that connection and it's pretty powerful it is absolutely uh the episode ends with the impact of this event being felt on coruscant as deidre and the isb are uh charged with coming up with a response to the event um and then the galactic senate loses all focus on mon mothma as she's uh, making one of her passionate speeches seeking aid for the gormans um, and then also a rich couple seeking trinkets ask luthan if he is anything from dahani where the skirmish just took place as they read their crap the out of him uh, yeah just scare it. uh <laughs> sam lots of terrorist events have taken place uh before this you get that from what's the conversations with the isb in the previous couple episodes but does this feel like something more significant to you i don't know the only reason why i think it feels more significant is we're seeing the media coverage i guess the star wars media coverage um you know we haven't really gotten that in in anything else we haven't really seen the public interaction to some of the things that the rebellion does maybe a little bit in rebels here and there um but not to a scale like this where it's getting all the way to course on everybody's like whoa this is huge um so i do think so maybe it's because there's more of a death toll i guess because there were a good number of rebel yes. or of, of imperials who were killed mm-hmm. i mean it was it's shocking think i mean think about this you know it, it, to connected to our world imagine if some 
terrorists walked into Fort Knox, Nash- Fort Knox and yeah. killed a bunch of American soldiers and ran off with a ton of money. It would be very. I much, mean, it would be it would very get shocking. on the radar. Yes, for sure. So I think that's why it it happened like that. I think why it was so big is yes, the the empire controls everything in Coruscant, especially in Coruscant, and so. The Empire was scared because not only did this hurt them because a bunch of the Imperial soldiers died and they were vulnerable. And they lost all They lost credits. money. And they yeah. lost something kind of just, just greed because they are greedy. The they Imperials lost a valuable resource. They lost a valuable resource. Back. They can conscript exactly. more people. Exactly. And so they lost something that was more important to them than the soldiers. And so they're making everybody know about it because this is a rebel attack. This was huge. This was a big problem. We all need to know about it and be sad for the the officers, but especially for the money that we lost because that was terrible. And so I really believe that was why it was so big. And I think that's why the Empire is reacting to it so massively because they understood, wait, we're vulnerable. And these people Mm -hmm. exploited us very easily. Yeah, I mean, they just literally, they pretty much just walked in and stole the money. Yeah, but it was the arrogance. It is exactly it is. what Cassian says to Luthen in mm-hmm. the third episode when he's like, you just walk in and take it. Right. So and that's fast, exactly what he needed Cassian mm-hmm. to do. Walk in and take it. And so that's what they did. So um, that was yeah. interesting. I think it's time for a dad moment. I am your father. Well, I kind of teased this earlier, but episode six ended very different, differently than I expected all the way up to kind of the very last moments of this. I was convinced that Cassian was going to see the death of Nemec as his reason to move beyond being a mercenary and to become a true believer. Um, but instead, Cassian just goes in, he takes his share, he returns the kyber crystal to Vel and he makes a getaway. Um, we know that before long, Cassian is going to go all in on the rebellion. But for now, he's got some growing to do. And there's the great lesson uh, to learn from this. We want people to come to our position on things very quickly, but we also have to be patient with them and let them come to those conclusions on their own timing. Patience is important, even when trying to recruit someone to join a rebellion. So. Good segment. Um, yes, thanks, good segment. Thanks. Appreciate it, guys. Um, and since you already spoiled it, I'll mention it again. Tony Gilroy has said that the uh, three episode arc structure will change in episode seven. So I'm curious. We'll see. We'll have to wait and see. But are we getting a one off episode or is something even more extensive? A movie in store. <laughs> no. We'll have to see. All right. Uh, anything else you guys want to talk about? Anything else? Yeah. Harrison Ford is going to be joining Captain America Four. Wow. Uh, he'll be taking on the role of General Rob previously played by the late William Hurt. He's going to do well because he's grumpy and old and it's going to fit the role perfectly. He is grumpy and old. That's cool, though. We're getting Han Solo in MCU. I don't, in, I in don't think uh, he'll do the CGI work for uh, Red Hulk, though. Probably uh, not. That would be cool. <laughs> Harrison Ford as Red Hulk would make me uh, a very Well, happy he's going man. to be. They're the same guy. The same character. But I don't think he can be in the CGI suit like uh, Mark Ruffalo is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that can happen. But after Henry Cavill... Ben Affleck reportedly signed a new Batman contract to appear in multiple DCEU projects. We already know of the Flash and Aquaman, so maybe maybe more. Maybe Shazam. Interesting. Maybe give us the Trinity in Shazam, please. I beg of you. The Father, Some Son, Wonder- and the Holy Spirit. No, no. Wonder Woman, yeah. Superman, and, and Batman. Batman. Oh, that Trinity. Okay, that would the be Holy Trinity of DC. There we go. Uh, Mark Hamill applauds Cincinnati's Fluke Skywalker. Oh, Aw, hey. that's awesome. Um, nice. On his Blink Parade appearance, talking about hey, how cool. much good Fluke does. That's awesome. Um, I love it. that. I also want to give a shout out to Fluke because Fluke, uh, when news articles wanted to start sharing information about that, he specifically asked that his own real name not be shared because he doesn't want to. He get doesn't want the credit. credit for it. That's so, so cool. Um, awesome, dude. It's pretty cool. cool. Cool, dude. Absolutely amazing guy. All right. Uh, that's going to do it for this week. Thank you guys so much uh, for listening to Tatooine Sons, a pop culture podcast. Yeah. And if you had a good time listening, <laughs> please share this with your friends. Um, awkwardly long. Pause, yeah, it was an awkwardly maybe. long pause because the, the nose is dead and informed me that <laughs> there was supposed to be an awkwardly long pause. <laughs> uh, but no, if you did have a good time listening, please share this with your friends and everybody and family. Yeah, and of course, if you only uh, this this show is only a small part of the Tatooine Sons world. So be sure to like us on Facebook, join the Facebook discussion group, and follow us on Twitter to get in on all of the action. We've you can also keep up to date with everything we've got going on 
at TatooineSons.com. That's right. And don't forget to follow the show on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss our next episode or your iPod app. <laughs> iPod. Um, with that. I miss and, iPods. Uh, iPods are cool. I want an iPod Nano. I know, like the little square Did ones. Did you hear that the first iPhone like sold for like $40,000? Yeah, today. What? It's just in an auction, a sealed version, an eight gig. Wow. Yeah. Uh, anyway, give us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever podcast app you prefer. I Join our Patreon so we can buy that phone. Oh, damn. <laughs> we don't even have our Patreon turned on. So, um, all right. Anything else you guys would like to say? May the force be with you. May the force be with you. May the force be with you always. This party's over. I like that monkey. Don't get technical with me. Joy, please.